In this video, we're going to learn how to do a very simple drag and drop in Unity. We're going to cover all the interfaces to interact with our UI elements. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so over here I have this item and in here a inventory slot. Now in this video we're going to explore all of the interfaces and events related to dragging and dropping. So here in the console window you can see the events. So you can see that when I press the mouse, there you go, there's one event for on mouse press down. Then as I start dragging, there you go, I have the on begin drag event. And as I let go, I have the on end drag event. Whilst the item is being dragged, as you can see, it follows the mouse position. And when I let go, it drops and stays in that position. And over here, I have the item slot, which is using the drop event. And you can see that if I take my item and I drop it right on the item slot, there you go, it gets snapped into position. And the object also turns invisible whilst it is moving. So this whole system is extremely simple and it works great. All right, so this is everything we want to cover. Let's get to it. Okay, so here's my starting scene. Over here in the hierarchy, I have my UI with my canvas. Inside, I have a item slot game object and a item game object. The only thing they have is an image. Okay, let's begin by making our script to handle it. So let's create a new C Sharp script. Let's call this drag drop. And we're going to apply it to the item game object. So just drag it in there. Okay. Now in here, let's check out how we can capture various events. Now, the way we do that is by implementing certain interfaces in our script. So let's start with the simplest one, which is the I pointer down, which is inside using unity engine dot event systems. Inside there, we have the I pointer down handler. So we have this function, which will be called when the mouse is pressed whilst on top of this object. So in here, let's just do a simple debug.log to test. Okay, very simple. Let's see. Okay, so here we are. Let's press with the mouse on top of our item. Click, and there you go. We have our nice event. And if I click outside, yep, there's no message. So that's how you implement a very basic mouse down event. Now here in the editor, you can see that when you create a canvas, it automatically creates a event system. This is the actual script that handles events and passes them on to whatever scripts implement the interfaces. So if you have issues with events, make sure you have the event system in your scene. All right, so back in our script, we have the mouse down handler working correctly. Now let's look at the drag events. So we have the I begin drag handler and then the I end drag handler. Now, as the name implies, this one gets called when we begin dragging and this one when we stop dragging. So let's add some logs to see. Okay, let's test. Okay, here we are in our scene. Now if I press, yep, we have the on pointer down event. However, we are not triggering the begin drag. The reason for that is very simple. In here, in order for these two to be fired, we also need to implement another interface, which is the I drag handler. So this is the one that gets called on every frame whilst we are dragging this object. So in here, let's put, Okay, so now like this, we should be able to test all three of these. Let's see. Okay, here we are, first click. There you go, on pointer down. Now as I move the mouse, there you go, it triggered the begin drag, and now it's triggering the on drag every frame that the mouse moves. And when I let go, there you go, we have the on end drag event. All right, awesome, so far so good. So we can press, drag, and drop. Now let's look at how we can move our object whilst dragging. So here the on drag function gets called on every frame whilst the object is being dragged and the mouse has moved. So we can use this to apply movement to our object. And the way we do it is by moving this rec transform. So let's make a private void awake just to grab our rec transform reference. Okay, we have our rec transform and now in here on the drag, we can modify the anchored position and we can increase it and we go into the event data and we can grab the delta. This field contains the movement delta, which is the amount that the mouse moved since the previous frame. So by adding this, we'll be moving our object alongside the mouse. Okay, that should do it, let's test. So here we are, let's press down, now move the mouse and there you go, as you can see, I am indeed dragging and I'll let go and there you go, the item stops. So I can drag, drop and there you go, very nice. 
So this is great, but you can already see an issue. The issue is that it's not following the mouse perfectly. So as I click right here on the white part and as I move away, there you go, you can see the sprite is moving further than the actual mouse. The reason for this is due to the difference between the mouse movement and the canvas scale. Here in the editor, if we inspect the canvas, you can see that the scale is not at 1, it's at 1.27. So this is why our movement is being incorrect. The screen position is moving on a ratio of 1, but the scale is 1.27. So the actual object moves 27% further than the actual mouse. This is due to how the canvas makes sure that it scales everything in order to always fit on every screen. So we need to use this value in order to get the correct movement. So let's go into our script. And in here, let's add a field for our canvas. Okay, here is the field for our canvas. Now let's go to the editor. There's our item with our reference to our canvas and just drag the reference, okay? So now that we have this reference, we can simply go in here. We increase by the event data dot delta, except we divide it by the canvas dot scale factor. All right, just like that, it should be working. Let's see. Okay, here we are. Let's press and move. And there you go. The object is now perfectly following the mouse position. All right, there it is, just like that. So we're right at the corner. Move it in there, and yep, still exactly where I grabbed it. And I can let go, and it stops exactly in there. All right, awesome. Now, one of the main things that you probably want to do with drag and drop is actually drop it into a specific position. Like, for example, drop this item onto this item slot. So let's do that. Here in our script, the interface that we need to implement is the iDrop handler. So it implements the onDrop function. This one gets called when a draggable object is dropped in here. So we actually don't want to implement this in here on the item, but rather on the item slot. So let's make a new script. In here, make a new script, call it the item slot. And let's drag it onto the item slot game object, okay. And now in here, we do what we were doing. So we implement iDrop handler just like that. In here, let's just do a debug.log. Okay, so let's test and see if this function is being called. Okay, here's our console. Now we click, we drag, there you go, we have the on drag, there you go, let go. And nope, we only have the on drag event. So we do not have the on drop. So go drop it, no drop, no drop, no drop. So something is wrong here. Now the answer is because the item itself is the one that is capturing the event instead of the slot. So if we want to drag and drop, we should disable the draggable item from capturing events. So here in the editor, let's go into our item and here, let's add a new component of type canvas group. As you can see, we have the various things we can change, like the alpha, for example, making it slightly transparent. And more importantly, we can define if this object should be interactable or not. So this is what we're going to use. Let's go into the code. And here, let's grab our canvas group. Okay, we have our canvas group. So here, when we begin drag, we go into our canvas group and we set the blocks raycast into false so that the raycast goes through this object and lands on the item slot. So set that one to false and when we finish dragging, we set it back to true. And also just for fun, let's make it slightly transparent once it's being dragged. So we simply modify the alpha, let's put it at 0.6 and when we finish, we reset back to one. All right, that should do it, let's test. Okay, so here we are, let's click and drag and there you go, as I drag, it's already becoming invisible and as I let go, it goes back into normal, just like that. Now here is my console, let's see, I click, there you go, pointer down, I drag, begin drag. Now I go into the item slot and I drop it and there you go, we have the undropped and the on and drag event. All right, so we have all of our events working, awesome. Now let's go into the slot script. In here, when we capture this event, we can also get the object that was dropped. That one is inside event data dot pointer drag. This is the game object that is currently being dragged. So we do a simple test. If this one is not null, then let's take it, get the component of type rec transform and set the anchored position to this anchored position. All right, so there it is, just like that. We should be able to see our item snap into position when we drop it near the item slot. Let's test. Okay, here we are, let's drag the item. Yep, we can drag and we can let it go, okay. Now let's drag and try to drop it right at the corner and see if it snaps right into position, drop. And there you go, it snapped perfectly into position. So I move it and if I let go whilst on top of the item slot, it snaps into the correct position. And if I take it out, then works exactly the same as previously. 
go, drop, go out. Right, awesome. So just like this, we have some very simple logic working for our drag and drop. So now you can take this simple logic and apply it to the inventory system built in a previous video. In doing so, you'll end up with a visual inventory system that you can drag and drop items onto. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.